Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. At this point, you've probably seen all the news surrounding AMD's Zen 4 Ryzen 7000 processors from their event earlier today. So with the dust settled, it's time to give our thoughts on AMD's next generation CPU lineup. We opted not to fly to the United States for this event, so we're sitting back here in Australia as always to soak up the information. First, a quick recap of what AMD is bringing to the table in 2022. The new Ryzen 7000 series is a full platform overhaul on a new socket, so to run these processors, you'll need to purchase a new AM5 motherboard. However, this will bring support for DDR5 and PCIe 5.0 technology, while the CPUs themselves all include integrated graphics for the first time, though this did barely feature in today's AMD presentation. The lineup itself consists of four processors initially, all launching on September 27th. At the high end, we have the Ryzen 9 7950X at $700 US, offering AMD's now standard 16 core 32 thread configuration at a new TDP of 170 watts. It's clocked up to a whopping 5.7 gigahertz with a 4.5 gigahertz base and 80 megabytes of cache split into 64 meg L3 and 16 meg L2. Before we get to the rest of the lineup though, Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly and their new 12th gen CPU contact frame by DeBauer. It's well known that the integrated loading mechanism or ILM of the LJ1700 sockets bends 12th gen CPUs, leading to an uneven contact surface that reduces cooling performance. Solving this issue, the contact frame replaces the ILM, allowing for a much more even contact with the CPU's IHS and the base of your cooler, which in turn reduces operating temperatures. Installation's quick and easy, and thanks to the use of anodized aluminium, the contact frame is non-conductive. And then, for those of you who wish to further maximize contact, Thermal Grizzly now offers an optional lapping tool, so for more information, please check the link in the video description. A step down is the Ryzen 9 7900X, bringing 12 cores and 24 threads at up to 5.6 gigahertz for $550. Then we have the Ryzen 7 7700X for $400 US as the eight core option with clock speeds up to 5.4 gigahertz, followed by the cheapest model in the lineup for now, the Ryzen 7 7600X at $300 US featuring six cores, 12 threads, and a 5.3 gigahertz boost frequency. This pricing structure is a little different from AMD's Ryzen 5000 series, especially for the 7950X, which now comes in $100 cheaper than the 5950X launched at, so that's good to see. However, the 5950X has fallen to just $550 on Newegg, so compared to current pricing, the 7950X presents a $150 US price premium. The launch pricing for the 12 core model stays the same, but again with current pricing we're looking at about $150 premium again for the 7900X over 5900X. Meanwhile the 8 core model is a bit cheaper than what the 5800X launched at, $400 versus $450. Though the model we're getting is the 7700X, so I guess this could be compared to the Ryzen 7 5700X at $300, or as low as $250 at the moment, another $150 price gap. However, it is $50 cheaper than the 5800X 3D, which is, I guess, interesting placement. The biggest disappointment in pricing structure is definitely the 6-core model coming in at $300 US, which is very expensive in the current market. While this is the same launch price as the 5600X back in 2020, that part has fallen to $200 in the face of strong competition from Intel, plus we now have the Ryzen 5 5600 occupying the $170 US price point. AMD is definitely leaving the door open here for a cheaper Zen 4 offering with something like a 7600 non-X in the future, but for now, like at the Zen 3 launch, this new Ryzen 7000 lineup is mostly a premium option. On a more positive note, AMD did reveal the final IPC claims for Zen 4 and the total expected single core performance gain. For IPC, we're looking at a 13% increase on average this generation compared to Zen 3, with both CPUs configured as an 8-core 16-thread model at 4GHz. AMD provided this chart which shows where this number comes from, ranging anywhere from slim gains around 5% in workloads like Lightroom to 9% in Cinebench R23, through to that 13% mark in some productivity apps and gaming, right up to some large gains above 20% in specific tasks. The IPC claim is a mix of both productivity and gaming, and comes from various architectural improvements as you'd expect. 
The total performance claim of 29% is achieved also through a significant frequency bump this generation thanks to the shift to TSMC's 5 nanometer technology and a streamlined core design. A 5.7 GHz maximum rated clock is 16% higher than AMD's best Zen 3 parts and puts AMD ahead of Intel's best old lake frequency of 5.5 GHz with the Core i9-12900KS, although we expect Raptor Lake to increase frequencies to some degree in just a few months. This figure is much higher than what AMD was quoting back at Computex earlier this year, which is good news for AMD's Zen 4 processor, but does make AMD's strategy back then look a bit strange. By announcing a mere greater than 15% single-thread performance uplift, the hype bubble surrounding Zen 4 was deflated at the time, so in hindsight that decision was pretty odd, and it's something we discussed in a Q&A episode a few months ago. A lot of people at the time said this was maybe AMD debating people and claims of sandbagging, but to what end? What, what really was the point of doing that? It, it certainly wasn't going to affect their main competitor in Intel. It, it's not going to affect them because AMD have announced, priced, and will even launch Send4 ahead of Intel's 13th gen series. So that gives Intel plenty of time to respond to the final specs and performance claims in terms of you know positioning their CPUs in the market. So I guess they were setting expectations low so they could exceed them later instead of keeping the hype train at full steam for, for reasons. Bit of a bizarre one there. Anyway, regardless of AMD's weird marketing moves, this sort of single thread uplift is the highest seen in AMD's Zen series so far. It's easily the biggest frequency jump, beating the 9% gain we saw with Zen 2 over Zen Plus, and the IPC increase isn't quite as large as either the Zen 2 or Zen 3 generations, but in combination with such a high frequency, we end up with a very large performance increase. What is interesting though are some of the performance claims AMD are making this generation. For example, AMD are claiming they have the fastest fastest core in gaming, using Geekbench single-thread performance showing the Ryzen 9 7950X, outperforming the Intel Core i9-12900K by 12%. That's a good number, but I do find it curious AMD have switched from using their usual benchmark of Cinebench R23 single-thread to Geekbench here. That does suggest to me that Cinebench numbers are less impressive, not that it matters too much as it's the overall performance picture that matters most. Generally speaking, what we've found is that Intel's Core i9-12900K and 12900KS are between 20 and 30% faster than the Ryzen 9 5950X for single-thread workloads. A 29% performance uplift for AMD would allow the 7950X to match and slightly exceed Alder Lake in many instances. At the very least, they should be trading blows with this sort of performance. However, the question remains as to how well Zen 4 will compete against Raptor Lake, given it's the 13th gen parts that will be Ryzen 7000's main competitor. If Intel are able to eke out a 5-10% single thread performance uplift, they'll likely be able to reclaim the single thread crown. This is setting up quite a tasty battle between AMD and Intel for these sorts of workloads, and I'm quite interested to see exactly where everything falls. It could be a very competitive generation. As for gaming performance, we did get a few benchmarks from AMD, one showing gains of up to 35%, although it was a fairly limited selection of titles. Unfortunately, AMD only compared their new Zen 4 parts to either the 5950X or 12900K, rather than their own gaming champion in the 5800X 3D. As we know, the 5800X 3D with its massive V-cache is able to provide around a 15% performance uplift over other Zen 3 processors in CPU-limited gaming. These claims from AMD, which should be always taken with a grain of salt given they, they're coming from the manufacturer, they do look decent, but it's hard to say whether it will end up outperforming the 5800X 3D, and if it does, by a significant amount. With that said, AMD are preparing a Zen 4 vCache release for later down the track. I think it's expected early next year. So if Zen 4 is able to roughly match the level of the 5800X 3D without vCache, then adding that technology to the picture should give AMD a mighty processor for gaming. Also of interest to AMD's claims for the Ryzen 5 7600X in gaming, they're claiming it should be 5% faster than the Core i9-12900K on average, with both using DDR5-6000 CL30 memory. We'll have to see how that plays out across more titles, but that's a very good position for the 7600X, given the 12900K is a nearly $600 CPU compared to the 7600X at just $300. The bigger issue for AMD isn't so much the 7600X versus 12900K though, but how this sort of 6-core processor will compare to Intel's more wallet-friendly offerings from not just the 12th gen, but the 13th gen as well. 
The 12900K is only about 5 to 10% faster in games than a CPU like the Cry5 12600K, which currently retails for $240 US. For AMD's cheapest Zen 4 processor to offer competitive cost per frame compared to the 12600K, it would have to be over 20% faster, which could be tough to achieve going on what these performance numbers suggest. And I guess this is where the disappointment at the $300 price point lies. Were it more like $250 or even $200 US, it would sound like an extremely impressive deal. But where it sits right now, it will require a full benchmark analysis. The really beastly aspect to Zen 4 appears to be productivity performance. AMD is showing gains between 32 and 48% across a range of rendering workloads like V-Ray and Corona, comparing the 16 core 7950X to the 16 core 5950X, which is a massive performance uplift in a multi-thread benchmark for two CPUs with the same core count. This is achieved through an enormous all-core frequency increase with the 7950X, able to hit at least 5 GHz all-core, giving a 25% jump there alone. Then we see an additional 13% average IPC increase, and yeah, that's a big difference in performance. In V-Ray, AMD showed the 7950X demolishing the Core i9-12900K by up to 57%, which will give AMD heaps of performance buffer up against 13th gen parts coming soon if these performance claims are accurate across more workloads. Raptor Lake is expected to increase the E-core count from 8 to 16 cores in the flagship model, but that's unlikely to be enough to close the gap that large. AMD are also claiming a 47% performance per watt advantage over the 12900K, suggesting the 7950X will consume far less power than the 12900K. This isn't exactly a surprise given AMD's big lead in efficiency with the previous generation, and we expect that to only improve with a new process node. So while the 170 watt TDP is higher than we've seen from current models like the 5950X, we're getting a much larger rise in performance and power consumption is still below that of Intel's top end parts. At the same TDP, AMD are expecting 35% performance gains at 170 watts and a huge 74% gain at 65 watts. That itself bodes extremely well for Zen 4 based mobile processors in the future. As for the AM5 platform, AMD has answered the key question today with news that AM5 will be supported through 2025+, plus, which should mean at least four years of support matching AMD's initial claims for AM4. At a minimum, this would support Zen 4 and the Zen 5 generation coming in 2024, with probable support for a third generation as well, which you know, may sneak into 2025. Maybe that plus is there to indicate that third generation. At least that's what I'm expecting. And this continues to blow Intel support out of the water as Intel continue to only offer two years of support with each motherboard socket and series at best. Uh, the actual motherboards will be split into four series with X670 and X670 Extreme coming in September, plus B650 and B650 Extreme in October. The Extreme appears to mean additional PCI 5.0 lane support for graphics and storage versus the non-extreme models, which will you know, you'll have to choose between graphics and storage for PCI 5.0, and as well as, you know, the extreme models just being the best made and highest end boards with the most features. But entry level boards should start at $125 US, which is a bit more expensive than AM4, but will still provide uh, more budget friendly offerings. Also adding to the platform cost is support for DDR5 only. There is no DDR4 support here at all, and so no DDR4 option like Intel provides. While AMD says they are easing the transition to DDR5 and talk about technology like Expo for easy one-click DDR5 overclocking, DDR5 is still more expensive than DDR4 at the moment. A 32GB DDR5-5600 kit from Corsair will set you back about $170 these days, compared to about $100 for DDR4-3600. So a much better price difference for sure than the launch of Old Lake, but still a cost to factor in when moving to the AM5 platform. Meanwhile, PCIe 5.0 SSDs are expected to be available in November. Finally, AMD teased RDNA 3 with a graphics card that looks like this, and a gameplay demo with absolutely no information whatsoever. So yeah, that was that was nice. So that's pretty much it for AMD's announcements today, or at least what we can share at this point. There's plenty more to come around the launch in terms of 
additional architecture details, and of course, performance benchmarks. The final Zen 4 reveal was reasonably impressive in some ways and disappointing in others, but I guess at the end of the day, what matters most is the actual performance and value, which is pretty hard to assess at this point. The most important thing to discover today was that AM5 will have long platform support like AM4, which makes it much easier to justify jumping into a new platform with DDR5 technology and gives AMD a serious competitive advantage over Intel. The expectation on Intel side right now is that the LGA 1700 socket will be replaced after 13th gen, meaning people buying into Intel's new CPU family this year will have effectively no future upgrade pathway compared to at least four years of support from AMD. That's massive and has huge implications for the upcoming competitiveness of each generation, as buyers I'm sure will be more willing to jump into the platform with longer support, even if performance and value isn't quite as good initially. It's absolutely essential for Intel's next socket and motherboard series to support more than two generations. At this point, it's almost a non-negotiable feature. The performance side of the equation is looking solid. AMD reversed the hype deflating announcement from earlier this year with IPC and single thread performance claims more in line with expectations and what is necessary to match Intel, enough to make the battle between Zen 4 and Intel CPU certainly very interesting moving forward. Multi-thread performance looks mighty good thanks to big frequency increases, while gaming is still a bit of a mystery as to how it stacks up compared to the 5800X 3D, but it is again certainly looking reasonable from AMD's first party benchmarks. Perhaps the biggest concern I have is over value, especially for a part like the Ryzen 5 7600X, which feels expensive at $300 US despite AMD claiming it's better at gaming than a Core i9-12900K. I just don't think that price will be all that compelling up against Intel's parts, which in the mid-range are typically not that much slower than the Core i9 models, yet are priced more around $200 or below. So there's really no counter for something like the Core i5-12400 at $190 in the Zen 4 lineup yet, which will limit upgrades, and the value proposition over something like a $170 Ryzen 5 5600 is also pretty questionable. I guess this should be tempered by the fact that the AM5 platform in general will be expensive to upgrade to, so perhaps opting for just higher end models to begin with makes sense. AMD have said that AM5 boards will start around $125 US, compared to around $100 for budget B550 boards today, while DDR5 memory is also at least 50% more expensive per gigabyte than DDR4. At launch, this will add $50 to $100 of platform costs over a new AM4 build or Intel DDR4 12th gen build, plus each CPU in the lineup is $100 to $150 more expensive right now than its Zen 3 predecessor, despite matching or coming in cheaper than launch pricing. So certainly lots of things to analyze there in terms of value, positioning, whether it's worth upgrading, what sort of platform you end up going with. So very interesting stuff for Steve to benchmark in the coming weeks. Anyway, that's it for this brief news update. Thanks for sticking around, listening to our thoughts on AMD's Zen 4 platform announcement, especially a couple of hours after the, the main stream from AMD has finished. If you're interested in checking out our reviews when they go live, please do subscribe to Hardware Unboxed. And if you want to support our independent testing, then do consider supporting us on Patreon or Floatplane. Links in the description below. You'll get access to things like monthly live streams, our behind the scenes videos, Discord chat, all that great stuff. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.